Jesus is our message, and we believe that we can share the Good morning, family. We want to invite you to stand with us in worship. You will be 
to be in the house of the Lord today. Are you just glad to be alive? Go ahead and share some love with somebody next to you and just tell them, I'm so glad I get to worship with you today. Come on, share some loves. Let's spread some love in the room. Anybody trusting God today? Anybody trusting and believing in God today? Anybody have faith in God today? Amen. Faith requires trust, amen. And trust is the key that allows us to access the will of God for our life. Do you guys believe that today? And sometimes, yeah, sometimes God just wants to know that even though you're going through the fire, even though you're going through things, the busy of life, he just wants to know that you're going to trust him. So can we declare that today, that we trust him? Let's lift our hands in the room and sing of his faithfulness. He's so good. He's so faithful.
thank you for being a God that we can trust. We thank you for being a God that is faithful. And we thank you for being a God that doesn't call us by our sin, but you call us by our name. Are you glad about that today, fam? Come on, let's declare these words to you. See, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. You sing. Come on, do you trust him today? Say, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered.
just one last time. See, I trust in God. He's my Savior.
Good morning, Rod Church. Good to see everybody. Merry Christmas. Feels good to say that. Uh, last week, we weren't sure what we, were, what we were saying. It was still Happy Thanksgiving. Some of you were still keeping leftovers far too long. And, and I, I just wanna do a little, little check so we know who's in the room. Are, anybody still got the leftovers from last week? Okay, security here, 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 and there. Um, no, it, it, it's Merry Christmas, and I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm just getting over a cough, and so I'm gonna do my best to, to bring an on-time word today w without stretching my voice too far, and I got my special elixir, my tea right here, and uh, if I need it, I'll grab it, but I'll do my best today. I, I think God has something real special today for us. As, as it is the Christmas season, this is the, uh, the season of joy, the season of peace, it's the season of hope, it's the season that all of your friends and family are looking up and they're thinking about God, and the world is open to hearing a message about a miracle. Can I get an amen? And so I believe God has that for us today. Uh, my name is Travis. If it's your first time here, welcome to the Rock Church. I'm so glad you're with us today. Uh, it, God had this day planned for you, and I know that you'll be encouraged and filled. I do want to say hello to all of our locations, San Marcos, City Heights, El Cajon, Chula Vista, Oahu, everybody joining online as well and in the room. Let's say Merry Christmas and clap our hands. Just a little greeting to everybody. A couple things before I jump into um, the scriptures today. One, uh, we have something on, on this, this coming Wednesday, the 6th of December. It's at 7 o'clock. Everybody say 7 o'clock. It's our first Wednesday prayer. And we just did our first one last November. And this will be the first Wednesday in December. And although it's a busy season and a busy week, I think this would be a great day for you to mark on your calendar and come join us. Anybody need more prayer in their life? Anybody need more conversation with the Lord and breakthrough from the Holy Spirit as he downloads things in prayer? Uh, so mark that on your calendar, December 6th. That's this Wednesday at seven o'clock. It's one hour. It's an hour of power and prayer and passion. More passion. More energy. I don't, it just came to me all of a sudden. It just hit me. It's too much TikTok and too much, you know, just things flying through. And anyway, it's not endorsing anything. It just hit me for a quick second. Rabbit trail. Back to prayer. First Wednesday prayer, it's gonna be incredible. I hope you're there. One hour, seven to eight o'clock. And we're just gonna lead you in a time of, of, of prayer. There's worship, uh, just declaring and crying out to God what we need from him, who we think he is, and who he says he is in his word. Amen. Amen, and then you, you heard it probably from um, through some of the videos and, and maybe uh, Pastor Vince shared or he will share at the end, but this is the Christmas season and we're gonna do four weeks of messages in this series, I'll tell you about in a second. But then we have the, the Christmas weekend experience and Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, that's the 24th and we'll do normal church service that day at 9 and 11, so invite your friends and family. Um, but also we're gonna do a Friday and Saturday different experience. That's going to be a special creative drama performance, uh, family experience, snow out in the rock park for the kids. It's going to be a great time for you to engage the people that wouldn't normally come to church. And if you don't normally plan on coming to the whole weekend, I, can I just challenge you, mark it on your calendar and make time for, for the Lord and just make it a whole experience for the friends and family to come. So there it is, Christmas experience. Uh, Friday's at 6 p.m. Saturday will be at 4 and 6. And then on Christmas Eve, we'll be at 9 and 11 at all of our locations and one at, 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 uh, in Chula Vista, they do a Spanish service at 1 p.m. It's gonna be great. I hope you're there. Uh, today, though, we are beginning a new series entitled, How Can It Be? Everybody, uh, on the count of three, let's say, how can it be? One, two, three. How can it be? And I don't know if you've ever asked that question before. How 
can it be? How can it be that I found myself here at church this Sunday? How can it be that I'm sitting next to this person here? I don't even know how I met this person, but all of a sudden we've been talking and now we think we're, she thinks we're dating, I guess. I don't know what's going, how can it be, Lord? I'm just kind of going with the flow, you know, tis the season. How can it be? Or maybe you've asked that question, how can it be that God in his love brought me from where I was? Anybody? From where I was to where I am today, how can it be But by the grace of God? How can it be? And we're gonna commit the next four weeks to this series and unpack the, the Christmas story, the nativity story. And it's more than a story, it's a historical account. And there are different characters in the Christmas story. Joseph and uh, the wise men, magi from the east, the shepherds who are in the fields, King Herod is a character. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about Mary. And Mary is the one who initially asked the question. We're gonna read it today in Luke chapter one. And she asked, how can it be that God would choose me? And how, how can it be? And what's the it in this story? It's the miraculous birth. It's the virgin birth. It, it, it's, the, it's the miraculous uh, introduction of the, the, the coming king, the newborn king, the Messiah of the world. He's the Emmanuel, God with us. How can it be? And so I'm gonna pray for us and then we're gonna jump into the word today. And, and I just believe that God is gonna raise the faith in your life through this word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this season. We expect great things at Christmas. This is the season where we believe you for more, we believe you for miracles, we believe you to do things that we can't do in our own power. And so Holy Spirit, would you just fill this room and fill the hearts of those that are listening and watching and receiving today, and I also pray for my throat and my voice, and no cough, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 I received that, amen. Anybody done any remodeling to your home before? All right, you watch too much HGTV, all of a sudden you can do it. Like, we don't need to call them, I could do it. Babe, I got it, I got it. Um, we, we've learned our lesson, my wife and I, a few times, and we've, we've done a few remodels on, on homes that we bought and then we sold and, the, and we, we moved into the house we live in now. We did a little remodel and um, we're redoing the floors in our home right now. And when you do the floors, it's not like paint where you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get like three or four gallons of different colors and just start painting walls and trying it out and live with it for a minute. And you know, I don't like that, paint over it. And no, uh, flooring doesn't work that way. When you go to the flooring store, they give you samples this big. And you just gotta go to the house and go home and put it in the corner and just look at it for a minute. I don't know if I like it, I don't know if I like it, I'm not sure. And then you gotta bring it over here and, and put it in different light and then you gotta wait till the sun goes down. And, 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 and we went to the flooring store and I went there like six times and I started blaming Vanessa. It's because my wife isn't sure yet. She can't make up her mind. It's me, it's me. And so I'm there exchanging the samples and I'm going home and, we're, and, and, there's, and, and if I can be honest with you, it's just a lot of pressure because once you install it, it's there. You can't just go over it and it changes the whole, the whole vibe of the house, okay? I watch a lot of HGTV myself, so I just did a little flip or flop and, and Property Brothers and the whole thing and, and, and I'm, I'm looking at the floor and like, okay, I think, this, I think this is the one. I think this is the one, it's stressful. Uh, you just gotta go for it. And finally we made a decision and we bought the floors and we're just, we're gonna get them installed. And we just believe, we're trusting, we're believing that this is gonna work out on our, on, in our favor. Like we made a good decision. And if I can just encourage you, I, I kind of feel like that feels like faith sometimes. Where you just go, Lord, I, I can't see the whole picture, but I'm believing and, and trusting God that it's gonna work out. I, I can't see all the steps, I just see small pieces. And once I make a decision, I can't always just go over it. I, I gotta just trust you and take a faithful step and believe God that you're in it. And so the title of my message today is Faith for a Miracle. Faith for a Miracle. And I, I wrote this down. I, I wrote, faith requires that we move beyond our limited understanding of things for the potential of reaching God's best. I think that's what faith requires. And that's my, my sentence. It's just, I think faith requires that we move beyond our limited understanding of things for the potential. It doesn't always work out, but faith says there's a potential that it's gonna work out for our good to reach God's, God's best. Faith for a miracle. And so I went to the scriptures and I, and I wanted to look at, well, what does God's word say that faith is? Because you can have an opinion and, and that person has an opinion and there's lots of faith communities in the world today Faith in this, faith in that, but what's, what, what's God's word say 
faith is. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Let me read it again. My faith is confidence. I'm, I'm confident in what we hope for and I have assurance about what we don't see. I, I'm confident in the thing that I can't see. That's what faith says. I, I got a belief inside of me. I got a conviction inside of me that says I'm believing for it even though I can't see it. So how do I get that in my life? If that's what faith is, how do I build that in my life? How do we build the faith in this room? You go to the scriptures in Romans 10, 17. It tells us, Romans 10, 17 in the NIV, it says, consequently, faith comes. Faith builds. Faith grows. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Faith comes and it's built and it grows by hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. And that's what God does for our character that we're learning about today. That's what God does for Mary. In the Christmas story, in Luke chapter one, God, God builds her faith. He sends a messenger, or they're known as an angel. And by the way, here, here's, this is extra credit. There's only three angels named in the Bible. Anybody know what the angels' names are? It was Gabriel in our story today, Michael, and Lucifer. Uh-oh. If you're ever wondering what you want to commit your life to, commit to the big three. This is extra credit. It's not my notes. But the big three. Gabriel's the messenger. He brings God's word. Commit to the word. Michael is the angel of war. Battle. Spiritual battle. We, we, we wage spiritually through prayer. Commit to prayer. Lucifer was the angel of worship. We wage against the enemy in worship. Commit to worship, commit to prayer, commit to God's word. God builds faith in Mary by sending a messenger named Gabriel and he builds her faith and tries to encourage her. And this is how it reads in Luke chapter one, Matthew, Mark, Luke, it's the third gospel account in the New Testament. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm gonna be reading this story out of the NIV. Matthew, Mark, and Luke Verses 26 to 35. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, that's her cousin, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And so right away we find out that Mary is pledged, or in other words, engaged. Any engaged people in the house today? Okay, a couple people, good, good, good. A anybody on your Christmas list is I wanna be engaged in the room today. Okay, just take note, take note. I'm Write that down, write that down. I didn't know, I didn't know. A virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. He's a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I wonder, what it would take for the Lord to look down at you and, and say, I, I find favor in you. Of all the people in the world, I'm, I'm choosing you. Of all the individuals, I've been watching you. I've been observing you. I've been seeing your life, I've been seeing your faithfulness. I've been seeing how you lead things, how you go about your life with your family and your friends. Can the Lord say that about you? Greetings, you who are highly favored by the Lord. That's what he says about Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is, is with you. But Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, because she was afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? There's our series. There's our question. How can this be? How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin, and she's confronted with her own self, her own flesh, her own lack of resume, credentials. Right away, God brings a word and immediately she comes back at, well, how can this be when I look at me? How can this be when I consider my situation? I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even 
Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. Mary is, is, is living in this tension. She's received a prophetic promise, the promise of the Messiah, but she's, she's living in this tension of doubt and wonder. Wow, this sounds incredible. How can it be? Doubt. This is amazing wonder. And Mary in our story is living in this tension, but in the middle of the tension is her journey of faith. In the middle of her tension is this journey of faith because I want you to get this. Don't, don't mistake the absence of faith or the, or the absence of, of, of belief as, 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 as what doubt is all about. D doubt isn't just only about absence of faith. It's an invitation towards faith. D doubt isn't just absence of faith, because I know, how many ever did doubt sometimes? Oh, I don't know, God, how can it be? I, I don't know, God, how, how are you gonna do this? I'm confronted with who I am. Doubt, doubt isn't just the absence of faith. It's an invitation towards it. And so she's living in this tension of doubt and wonder, and that's her journey towards faith. And the story, once we unpack it, I'm gonna unpack it for you. There, there's four real big takeaways, four, four practical takeaways that I love from Mary's story. The first one that we see about faith is that faith often feels like fear. And if you've been through something recently, maybe you're in that, that something right now, you can feel it. Faith often feels like fear. It can feel that way sometimes. I, I don't know if this is faith. I don't know if this is from the Lord because I'm filled with fear. I'm filled with anxiousness. I'm filled with worry. I'm filled with, with myself. In Luke 1, 29, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Too late, I'm scared. Like, <laughs> that's why you started with, with that greeting because you clearly saw my face. My face looked like this. And my face has not caught up to your greeting yet because I'm still looking like this. He says, don't be, don't be afraid, Mary, don't be afraid. Easy for you to say, giant, huge being in my house, in my living room, don't be afraid. I'm just gonna not be afraid. This glowing figure comes in and poof, just comes in the room all of a sudden. Don't be afraid, Mary, here I am in my glory. She's scared to death. That's why he says it. Don't be afraid. Faith feels like fear sometimes. But he begins to encourage her. She's greatly troubled. She's got fear. She hears the message. There's doubt, maybe worry. Thinking about Joseph. Uh -uh. There's maybe unbelief. And then he encourages her, is her, you have found favor with God. And I, and I know it feels troubling, but Mary, don't worry, God's in it. Don't worry, God's in this. I, I, one of the, one of the, the, the questions I get a lot from some of our up and coming communicators and some of our, our young adults and we hang out sometimes or if they're coming to host or they're gonna jump on this stage and they'll ask me, Travis, do you ever get nervous? Do you ever get nervous when you, when you talk or do you get nervous when you come out and do things? And my answer is the same, every time, every time. Every time I'm nervous. This morning I'm nervous. Yesterday I'm nervous. Writing this, I'm anticipating it with nerves. And sometimes it'll manifest in, in an individual's body. You, you just start to convince yourself, I, I think I'm getting sick. I think I'm getting sick. I think I got it. I think I got it. What do you got? I don't know, but I got it. <clears throat> it's on me. I went to Ikea. There was too many people. I got it. I touched all this, all this stuff. I went to Costco. I ate all the samples. I got it. Yeah. And you just start blaming things. It's nerves. It's nerves. Every time I'm up here. And it really depends on, on the platform or the size or the, the, the size of the moment or the importance of the moment. There's a tree lighting uh, last Friday I did. And, and I went up there, and there's, they told me 33,000 people are coming tonight. I'm like, that's it? Just 33? 31? 33, all right. 33,000, sounds great. That's good. Had an interview the, 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 the afternoon before that, and I couldn't see the screen, and they were supposed to ask me questions and then they didn't ask me the questions. They just said, hey, go ahead and start talking. <laughs> what? <laughs> the nerves. Every time 
I feel it. I, 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 I can feel it in my body, but I've learned to become friends with it. I've learned to recognize the nerves. In the beginning, it was het, and over time, with consistent repetition, you create a conviction in the things you do. It's a lasting impression. And so as the day comes and as the moment comes and as the occasion comes and the interview comes or your job comes, I, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm not only afraid of it, but I become friend with it, friends with it. I remember you. I know you. I, I'm not afraid of it, even though I fear fearful. I, I'm not running away from it. I'm actually le- leaning into it. I'm not running away from it, I'm leaning into it. Here's the application. There's some of you that have been thinking about quitting a job, you've been thinking about applying for a job. There's somebody that's been thinking about committing to a relationship finally or maybe ending the relationship because you know it's not honoring to God, but you can't commit to the decision because you're nervous and you're fearful and, and, and you're overwhelmed, but you need to commit because the feelings of fear are not always a reason to run away. Most often, they're an invitation to turn towards God in faith. I, I'm, I'm not running away. I can't mistake the lack of peace as permission to not move forward. L- look up here. Some of the greatest things you'll ever do, you won't do them because there's no fear. You'll do them in spite of the fear. I'll do it afraid. Watch this. I can do it afraid if I do it in faith. Because faith requires me to lean in. And get over my understanding. It doesn't make sense, but I'm reaching for what God has for me, this potential. Faith feels like fear sometimes. And here's the second thing I get from Mary's story. Faith requires sacrifice. Faith requires sacrifice. It, it feels like fear sometimes, but I'm leaning into God. I can, do it, I can do it in fear, through fear, in spite of fear, if it's by faith. And faith always and often requires sacrifice. Look at Luke 1, verse 34. She hears the message. Gabriel's trying to build the faith in Mary and then she asks the question of the series, how will it be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. You think about that, Gabriel? You just come and show up and think that it's all good. I had plans, you know, I was, I was in, I'm engaged to Joseph. I just, I was getting, I had my hair done. I got extensions, the whole thing. I had a plan. I was, we were gonna plan the wedding before kids. We, we were gonna do it. We had the venue. We had a spot. All my friends were coming. Family was coming. And it was just gonna be epic. Joseph and I, we've been looking at apartments. We're gonna get something downtown. Maybe get a golden doodle first. We don't know. But all of a sudden, you come in here with don't be afraid, highly favored one. You're gonna have a baby, king of the world. And everything's cool. But I wonder if for a moment if Mary goes, not, not with me. How can it be? I'm just a virgin. I have plans. I'm, I'm, a lot of theologians think that because of historical accounts that women in this time that would be engaged or betrothed to be married then soon get pregnant, we're anywhere from 13 to 17. And so the images that you've seen of Mary as this this 37-year-old woman, that's great, but she's young. And and I'm I'm looking at the young people in the room who are 13, 14, 15, the girls in the room, and just imagine that feeling. And you're going, how can this be? I'm just a teenager. I'm just a virgin. How can this be? The speed, I, God, don't you know I have a timeline? This doesn't fit my plans. Anybody? This doesn't fit my plan. I had a timeline. I, I just, I had a dream vision board and I had it all marked out. Doesn't fit my timeline. There's another story in Hebrews 11 where Abraham is a man of faith and God has promised him to be the father of the future generations to come. I wanna read you the story quickly in 11. Hebrews eleven seventeen. 17, it says, it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac, his son, as a sacrifice when God was testing him. And Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready though to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But Abraham, the reason that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life. Wow. 
What kind of sacrificial faith is that? God tested Abraham's faith because God had great plans for Abraham and he needed to know that Abraham was ready. On Fridays, I'll do, I'll do donuts and dad on Friday with my kids. Donuts and dad. And, and we'll, we'll get out of the house and my wife does an incredible job and, and she, she's packing lunches and backpacks and, you know, just getting ready. And I'm just, I'm just trying to be helpful. Like, you need anything? What you need? You need me to help something? What can I do? I'm just trying not to get in the way here. Just trying to get in the way. We get the kids in the car and then off we go on Friday. It takes about an hour to get to school with traffic in San Diego and, and we'll hit the donut shop. And so I'm, I'm on a timeline. Kids are up, up, up at six. We're out the door at seven. I gotta get them to school by 7.50. Now on Fridays, traffic's a little bit better. So so I can hit the donut shop with the kids. Boom, it's cash only. So I got cash. A couple Fridays ago, I, I, I pull into the donut shop and I get there and I, I, got, I got the urgency, uh, uh, expeditiously walking look. Okay, I don't even know that's a word, expeditiously. But, it, but I was going quick. I had, I had the fast walk. I'll give it to you one time here. It was just like this. I got a look that says, I'm going to get the donuts. Nobody get in my way. Here I go. And I'm getting to the door and I feel somebody over here. And it's a little uh, um, elderly woman. And she's coming. And she's close to the door, but not walking fast enough to beat me to the door. And I'm, I'm like this. Like, let's go. Donuts. Donuts. And I'm close, but I sense her. And I had a moment where <laughs> the Holy Spirit was like, what you going to do? <laughs> I was like, I'm busting through and getting in line. That's what I'm going to do. Excuse me. <laughs> I didn't do that. I got to the door first, but I opened it, and I said, go, go, come on in, ma'am. And she came in. Go ahead, clap your hands, clap your hands. <laughs> and then I cut in line. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I let her in, and I knew it wasn't just a decision to hold the door open. It was a decision, because this, this, is, this isn't like, you know, let's go see the store and check out all the donuts. It's just a little, little store, and, and here's the door, and here's the front line. And so I opened the door, and she got in front of me. It was just me and her, and the person that owns the donut shop. And I'm ready. I know what my kids want. We want one, one regular glaze and one chocolate glaze and two bags, so no one argues. Let's go. Get the money ready. Keep the change. Let's go. I'm ready. I open the door, she walks in, and she's like, hello, good morning. Just looking at all the different flavors. Hadn't, didn't, didn't make a plan, clearly. There's no plan. Just enjoying the day. Checking all the donuts and, mm, you do samples? We don't do samples. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> looking at the different flavors, picking out her donut, and she picks a donut, I'm like, oh, let's go, Lord. Yes. She breaks out her coin purse. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Quarter. How much was it? Okay. 35. And I'm dying. I'm like, ugh, ugh, ugh. I'm dying. But I, I heard the Lord say, hey, can I count on you? to sacrifice your plan, your timeline, your, your pattern of life, to sacrifice and represent me even when it's inconvenient. Can I count on you? Can I count on you not just to be a pastor in front of people, but to be a disciple in front of all people? Can I count on you? Can you live a faithful life and represent me even when it's hard? Mary passed the faith test and she sacrifices her plans for God's plans and God's plans were so great because God's plans were to bring in the savior of the world. And that's why a faith that hasn't been tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Can God trust you? Can he trust you to sacrifice? Faith requires that we move beyond my limited understanding with the potential of reaching God's best. That takes sacrifice. Here's the third thing. Faith leads us to God. Faith sometimes feels like fear, but we lean into it by faith. Faith requires sacrifice. Number three, faith leads us to God and away from ourselves. In Luke 1.35, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. I love that image. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. That there comes a point in your relationship with the Lord where the faith required to get you to your miracle will mean that I become less important and God becomes most important. There comes a point where the faith required to get you to your miracle because I want faith for a miracle. But if I'm gonna get there, there's a point in your relationship with God where you decrease so that he can what? Increase. I must become less so God can, can become more. And so that's what the angel tells her, the Holy Spirit. He answers her question. Earlier it was, how can this be? I'm gonna sacrifice. Yeah, but, but faith leads us to God and away from yourself. He's gonna overshadow you. It's gonna, it's gonna be less about you, Mary, and it's gonna be more about God. The second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But walking by faith that doesn't mean it's, it's blind faith, it's focused faith. See, what, you've heard that, what, walking by faith, oh, blind faith, no. Walking by faith and not by sight just means that I don't blindly walk, I walk with focus. And I'm looking at, at Jesus, I'm focused on him. I'm not paying attention to the people and the distractions and the words and the concerns. I'm looking at Jesus. Levi got a little shot on Friday, he had to go to the doctor and the whole time on his way, he was just anxious and worried and, and he had heard about the shots and his sister and, ah, and he was just, all he could hear and think in his mind were the thoughts, a distracted faith. But my little guy's favorite verse and my daughter's favorite verse is Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged for the Lord is with you wherever you go. That's a focused faith. Faith leads us to God and away from ourselves. I love this quote by Tim Keller. He says, it is not the strength of your faith, but it's the object of your faith that actually saves you. And so it's not the strength of me. I don't gotta, you just gotta believe in yourself. No, no, I, trust me, that's not a good plan. I don't need to believe more in me and have faith in me. It's not how much courage I have. It's the, the focus of my faith that matters. It's my focus on Jesus and faith leads me to God. Away from me, all to God. Here's the last thing from Mary's story. Faith is the first step towards your miracle. Faith sometimes feels like fear, anxious. I'm doubting. But doubt is not always the absence of faith. It's an invitation towards it. So I'm gonna lean into it. Faith sometimes feels like fear. Faith requires sacrifice. In order to get where I'm gonna get to, I gotta lay it down believing that God's plan is better. Faith will lead me to God. It's, it's less of me. How, how is this? How can it be? How is this possible? Because the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the love of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God will overshadow you. That's how it will happen. But faith is also the first step towards your, your miracle. Anybody need a miracle today? A miracle. Anybody in your family need a miracle today? Luke 1, 37. The angel answers Mary's question. How can this be? In more detail, he says, in verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. It's God. How's it gonna happen? It's God. How, how is God gonna fix it? It's God. How, how am I gonna get through this hard season of depression? It's God. How, how am I gonna figure out this relationship tension? It's God. How am I gonna get, gonna get through finals and everything else? And it's God. For nothing's impossible with God. How can it be? Nothing's impossible with God. You can put your faith in God because he's the God of the impossible. In Hebrews eleven six. It's my last verse. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe. You must believe. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, but anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those that earnestly seek him. God rewards, God blesses, God favors, God comes through for the people that believe by faith. That's what he does. 
He comes through. This is the season where everyone is asking the question, what do you want? What do you need? What's on your Amazon list? What do you want for Christmas? What's on your list? Is it romance? New job? My forever home? This economy? Heck no. <laughs> That's next year's list. Wanna be debt free? Come on, somebody. I'm believing God for a baby. That's on my list. Not my list, Vanessa. <laughs> Somebody's list. Just take a little commercial break for a moment and shoot. Maybe it's family. I just want my family to come home. I wanna be around my family this year. Maybe it's friends because you're new to San Diego, you're new to your area, and you've just been praying and believing God for a new community, one that looks like this. I just need joy in my life, I need peace in my life. I've been so anxious and forgiveness in my heart. A new car, snow. I'll take care of that one, December 22nd and 23rd. Snow in the back of the Rock Park, come on somebody. No pain, a promotion. See, everyone's asking that question. What do you want? What do you need? What's on your list? What, what, what are the things? What, what, what's your Christmas miracle? What, what's the thing that you've been believing God for? I'm writing it down. I'm making a list, checking it twice. But can I just tell you that there is one gift above all the rest that may or may not be on your list that checks all the boxes. And his name is Jesus Christ. Here's the thing about gifts. Gifts weren't meant to stay under the tree. Gifts weren't meant just to sit in your hand and look beautiful. Gifts were meant to be opened. They're meant to be opened and enjoyed and received. Jesus was the very first Christmas miracle. Look up here. He's still the greatest Christmas miracle. So we're gonna sing together in a moment just to build faith in the room, to believe God for whatever it is that you're believing God for. Because you may walk in today and go, how can it be? How's it gonna happen? I don't get it. But faith requires that we move beyond our limited, human, small, fleshly thinking for the potential of reaching toward God's best for your life. Let's try to build faith in the room. Faith for a miracle this season. This is the season. This is the time. And this may be the day. But can I encourage you, faith sometimes feels like fear. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I have the courage. But I can do it afraid if I do it in faith. And faith requires sacrifice. So there's something in your world that God may be saying, give me that. I need that. If you want that, I need that. I need that. I need you to lay it down plans, you, whatever you were thinking, your person, I got something better. The faith will lead you to God, but as he leads you to him, he minimizes you. You have to get smaller on your faith journey so that he can become greater. He's already great, but he wants to be great in your life. He wants to bring about a great Christmas miracle, and faith is the first step towards that miracle your heads, let's pray. Jesus, thank you today for our time together. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for Mary's faith. Thank you for the angel Gabriel that came and built faith in her in the midst of her worry and doubt. She went from doubt to wonder because of faith. And Lord, we have faith today in the room for a miracle, for breakthrough, for a relationship with you for something that only you can do. And so God, right now, 
Breathe in faith. Increase our capacity. Build it in our hearts. We trust in you. It's not blind faith, it's focused faith. I'm not walking by sight, I'm walking by faith. I'm not living by what I hear and see and what comes against me, I'm living by faith today. It's the substance of things hoped for and confidence and assurance of things I haven't even seen, but I believe it today. So help us, Lord, even in our unbelief. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Let's worship together, come on. Let's stand to our feet, family. He will never fail. See, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never. Come on, lift your voice. Let's build the faith in the room. Come on, let's sing it together, family. One voice. Say, I trust in God. He's my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. We'll sing it again. I trust. I trust in God. He's my Savior.
somebody in the room this morning that needs to be included in that heart, that prayer. Just You're saying, I, I wanna trust God today. I wanna bring faith in my life. You, you need to be in that, that prayer today. I wanna trust God. Will you lift your hand today? Say, I, I wanna trust God. I wanna give him my life. I wanna build faith in my heart. Vince, would you go ahead and lead him in that prayer?